right, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Keenan. Welcome to the Pro Football Exclusive NFL Blog. I already finished off my grades for this year's NFL Draft. Now it's time for me to give you some predictions of what's going to happen with the future for some of these athletes coming out of this year's NFL Draft as well as the top undrafted agents this offseason. Now starting off with these um, picks for my predictions, I'm going to start with the Offensive Rookie of the Year who I believe I'm going to go with Alabama's Trent Richardson. I think a lot of people are going to go with more with Andrew Luck or RG3 of Washington, but I'm going to have to go with Trent Richardson in this because he's in a great situation, going to be the premier offensive weapon for the Cleveland Browns, and I think he's going to get the ball a lot his rookie season, which means more opportunities to get yardage and score touchdowns, catching and carrying the football, and I just think because this is going to be the top offensive weapon for the Cleveland Browns, the ball's going to be put into his hands more opportunities to score touchdowns and play in a tough AFC North division. If he has a great rookie season, I think he will be the Offensive Rookie of the Year. Defensive Rookie of the Year, I'm going to actually stick with Alabama, another Alabama player, Mark Barron. The safety coming in from the Crimson Tide. This kid has a lot of playmaking skills, and he will help support that run for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers secondary and run defense. I think he's going to be all over the field and a good and a good on um, playmaker. He, he had a lot of interceptions throughout his career in college football, and I think he's going to make that same transition into the NFL. Now, I was actually going to first go with Luke Cookley out of Boston College, who went to the Carolina Panthers. But because uh, because he's with Carolina and John Beeson is coming back and James Anderson also had over 100 tackles this past season, it's going to be more to, uh, more times where we're going to see all three of them working well together. And I don't think Luke Cookley is going to outshine both James Anderson and John Beeson because they have a sick linebacking core already, which means I don't really think he's going to get that many tackles like we did see in college. But he's still a spectacular athlete. He will drop back for coverage. But I just think because of that scenario at um, Carolina, he's not going to get that many tackles like he did back at Boston College. Now, if he had went to the Seattle Seahawks like I predicted, then yes, I would have went with Luke Cookley because he would have been that premier star on that defensive side along with Earl Thomas and Cam Ch um, Chancellor. But the reason, but now that he's with Carolina, I'm going to have to go with Mark Barron of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think he's going to have a spectacular season player that I believe that's going to go to the Hall of Fame and succeed most uh, a great Hall of Famer wider way, I'm going to actually go to Luke Cookley of Boston College. This kid is a monster. I just really believe in this kid. He's not going to be like that Andy Katzamore from Ohio State bus, but I think he's going to shine in the NFL. He's going to be a name, a force to be reckoned with on the defensive side. He probably he will eventually be the leader of the Carolina defense, but as a rookie, he's just going to get things started with John Glenn from John Beeson and um, James Anderson and how to convert from college to the National Football League because the speed is a lot different. But I really believe that he's going to have a bright future. He's a for sure Hall of Famer out of all the first round draft selections. Players that the player that I believe that's going to have the bus who could be on the verge of being a bus. I'm going to actually go with Quentin Copos for the New York Jets. This kid has a great upside. Big, big player. Weighs over 280 pounds. He does have a great uh, uh, uprising. But he is lazy at times, and he sometimes gives up on plays. And I don't think he's going to do well in the NFL if he sticks with the same attitude as he had in college. This, he's going to be playing with the big boys, so it's going to be hard for him to really make that adjustment. He just needed to be more mature in the National Football League. Hopefully, Coach Rex Ryan gets it, helps him get his acting work together, and he plays hard 100%. But I believe that out of all of these first-round selections, Quentin Copos could be on the verge of being the draft bust. Another nominee I, I could have went with on Don Terry Poe of the Kansas City Chiefs, but he had an outstanding workout, and I really think because of that workout, he's going to be pumped and motivated to help out that Chiefs defensive line. Now, Quentin Copos, great athlete, but like I said, he can get lazy at times, and when you play in the National Football League, you cannot be lazy. This is not college. It's going to be a different speed, and I think he's going to make a, have a hard time maturing. If he does not mature, I think he's going to struggle and become a bust for the New York Jets, so I have to go with Quentin Couples on this one. Now, I'm going to actually talk about a couple of undrafted players that we that were not drafted for this year's NFL Draft. I'm going to first start off with Kellen Moore of Boise State. This kid is the winningest, coach, uh, winningest quarterback in college football history. He does not have a strong arm, and he kind of lacks uh, some of the other intangibles, mainly because of the, the, the non-arm strength. That is the reason why he was not drafted. But he is still a great athlete, and he's a winner for sure. I think he will make at least a backup quarterback, and for his career, maybe have the potential to start it. He just need to have that Tom Brady mentality, 
work hard and prove that he is one of the top players. And I think he should have been drafted this year's NFL draft, even though his arm strength is not as great as other quarterbacks. I still think because of he's a winner and he is very accurate, he should have been at least drafted in the later rounds. But he was not drafted, and he's one of my top players that everybody needs to look out for for the undrafted athletes. At the offensive tackle position, I'm going to actually go with James Brown of Troy. This kid has great feet and weighs over 320 pounds. I think he had a decent draft workout at the NFL Draft Combine, but he still didn't do good enough to be drafted. And I think he could be a sleeper at the offensive tackle position and be a, liable play, and be a good, reliable player for any team that signs up with him. He did just recently sign with the team, but you know, and he still got to work out and try out for the team. Hopefully he will make it, and I think he will, and I think he could be a good reliability for any team in the National Football League. Going to the cornerback position, I'm going to actually talk about Leonard Johnson out of Iowa State. This kid does not have good speed. He runs a 4.740, and that's the reason why he did not get drafted. But I still think it's because even with the lack of speed, he still has great cover skills. The main, the one game in particular where I saw him display his great skills, it was against Oklahoma State in their upset this past season at home. He did a great job covering Justin Blackman, the two-time Oblitnikoff Award winner given to the nation's top receiver. And this top receiver was pretty much kind of shut down against Leonard Johnson. And I think he should have got more more notoriety based on that game. Some people do not play up to the, the speed that we do see on the clock. He does run a 4740, but I think he's a little bit faster on the field. Good cover corner, and I think he has good enough speed to get to the football and close into the football and make some pass breakups. He did a spectacular good job against Justin Blackman, the top receiver for this year's NFL draft. I think he should have got just a little bit more recognition. And I think he's going to be a, a, a good, uh, he should make a team for any team in the National Football League. Going into uh, the running back position, actually I'm going to go to the linebacker position, Vontez Burfecht out of Arizona State. This kid, obviously we've all seen it for the past season in college football. His stats dropped, he started to get into arguments with coaches, and he had a couple of off the field issues. And he gained a lot of fat coming into the draft combine, and this was really dropped his draft status. A lot of people had him going into the first round, coming into the, hit of the 2011 college football season for this year's NFL draft. But he ended up dropping his stock, and he ended up screwing himself over because of what happened at Arizona State this past season. A couple of off-the-field issues. He's actually arguing with the coaching staff. Those are not good pointers, and those will not give you points for teams in the National Football League. That's why he dropped out. I think he will make a team and, 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 and be a good asset, hopefully in the future if he gets his act together, but his life is, and his career is pretty much already going downhill because of what we saw this past season in college football. I had him as one of my top two linebackers coming into this year's NFL draft before the college football season, and he ended up screwing everything over. Now, the number one player that I was shocked that was not selected was Chris Polk, the running back out of Washington. And this kid, he's a great athlete. He had over 1,800 yards of total offense for the past couple of seasons in college football for the Washington Huskies. And I really like this kid because he, he had a lack of speed. He also ran in 4.740. He doesn't have a good speed burst and a great acceleration, but he still is very productive. He has good hands. He has decent blocking ability, but he's a great running back. Over 1,400 yards for the past couple of seasons rushing. And I think he's a good receiver, one of the top all-around running backs catching and carrying the football in this year's NFL draft. I had him just as my honorable mention in my top five for this year's NFL draft, and I'm very shocked that he was not selected. This kid is a good athlete, and I don't think, I think the 40 time is a little bit overrated for some people. Just because you ran a bad 40 does not mean it's the same speed that you're going to play in the, in the game time. Some people play a little bit faster when they're actually being chased by somebody, while others can be slower because of the pads. You can run a 4 3 40 um, with no pads on, but what, if, what happens if you have pads? Some people actually run a little bit different with pads on, and some people run faster when somebody's actually chasing them. And I just think Chris Polk was a little bit raw from this, but I think he will make a team, at least the second string running back, at least potentially the first, depending on if he, had, if he steps up to his opportunity, and he will have an opportunity. I think this is a good running back, and I was pretty shocked that he was not selected. He was my number one player that I was just could not understand why he was not um, picked for this year's NFL draft.
Now, I'm pretty much I'm pretty much done with the NFL for the next couple of months. Next time you're gonna see me is when I talk about fantasy football. I'm gonna head over back to my favorite league, league college football. Give you give you posted with the latest news. There's a couple of latest news that I'm gonna keep you guys posted this upcoming week. I'm gonna be off in the next couple of days. Going um, going out for my mother on uh, Mother's Day. I wish every every mother a happy Mother's Day, and you guys are really appreciated. I love each and every one of y'all. I wanna give a shout out to my mother Celeste McCall. I love you to death, mom. Be easy, and I'll catch you guys a little bit later next week. Thank you for watching today's vlog from Pro Football Exclusive. I'm your man, Akeem McCall. Be easy.